his GCW debut. He's back. Jinder Mahal is back. Support Jinder Mahal, as I say. Hello, everyone. Are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wolkie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Uh, what are we talking about today? It's new banner time almost, uh, which means Summer Ibuki is coming up. Summer Ibuki should be here on Sunday, which is the 21st. Um, and then a, three days after that, on the 24th, that's when Scotty's going to be here. So today, I'm going to be just talking about Summer Ibuki and then the other unit that's on here, Arise. Obviously, <laughs> you don't really need me to tell you Summer Ibuki is good. <laughs> she is very good. But if you, for some reason, need to hear me say she's good, then I'll go over both units and kind of talk about them and <laughs> tell you Summer Ibuki is good. The, yeah, the unit that I've been waiting over two years and saved up 300 tickets for, actually, she's very bad. But anyway, let's get right into it. We'll look at the banner real quick. The Craft Essences, it's the basic women's and man's. Very easy. Next, uh, Eris. I'm pretty sure that's how you say her name. It's either Eris or Aris. I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen... Maybe it's Eric. Eris? Eric? Alright, Eric. Eric is, um... Avenger. She has two clicks, two arts, one buster. Her first skill is the Dread Spirit Peacekeeper A. Increases own arts performance for three turns and then grants self evasion for two attacks, three turns. 30% to arts and cooldown to six. Um, her second skill is the Boundary Towards Yomi C. Inflict Curse with 1000 damage for three turns to all enemies. 500% chance to grant uh, to draw attention to all enemies itself by 300% for one turn. Grant self debuff on defense buffs for three turns. Inflict defense down by 10% for three turns to enemies when taking attack. And then charge your own MP gauge. That's 30%. That's a lot of things that happen in one skill. Cooldown 6 though. Grim Reaper A. Increase own instant kill success rate for three turns. Increase own damage for three turns. Increase own damage against servants and enemies for three turns. 100% death rate. The crit damage is 35% and the servant damage is 35% and the cooldown is 6. Her passive skills are Avenger C, Oblivion, Correction C, Self Replenishment, Magic EX, Writing C, Independent Action B, and Divinity E. Her third skill is an Anti Lancer Attack Damage Aptitude because trust no one, not even yourself. And her rank D Noble Phantasm is the Ameno Kagami no Fune, the Vessel of the Ameno Kagami. Uh, like I said, it's rank D, hits four times, it is arts. Deals damage to one singular enemy, deals 150% extra damage uh, if they have the curse status, and then an 80% chance to instant kill them. Uh, the note here is obviously the note that says, that, oh yeah, instant kill always succeeds against mob enemies that have 80% or higher death rate. Basically, bronze servants are using the Grim Reaper. Further using the Soya high school enemies with 50% death rate, basically silver rarity, and then you can see here how much it would take to do the instant kill stuff, so... I don't know, it's a bunch of jibber and jib, jibber jabber to me. MP level 1, the damage is 900%, and if you get her all the way to MP level 5, going for Summer Ibuki, it is 1,500. Her overcharge effect is increased to own arts performance for a single turn. It's 10% at charge level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, that is 30%. And because she is arts, she does have the benefit of, of being with uh, Merlin and Castoria. But anyway, that is Summer Eric over here. So how is she? Um, nothing really bad seems to come out to her. The one thing I'll say is that usually I'm not the biggest fan of instant kill um, servants, but she doesn't seem to have that instant kill that applies first before damage is dealt. So that means she should, in theory, be able to get MP gain. Plus, she's a single target attacker, so for unless you're specifically fighting something that is not a single attack focus thing, does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Um, basically, a lot of dudes have very high instant kill, so even though she gives herself, like, what... 200% death rate, um, I'm pretty sure it's not actually always going to kill. It's going to kill a decent bit, for sure, especially if you're fighting someone who's a bronze or silver tier enemy, but I'm never 100% sure of that just because like I don't use very many instant kill servants myself. But besides that, even with, uh, she does not solely focus on the instant kill, it's just a nice bonus thing she has. I do like the 150% extra with Curse, and then I also like that Curse can be applied with a second skill. This second skill does a lot, actually, the way that it gives a taunt, and then also makes it so that when they're hitting her, they'll even take more damage because of defense down. And then it's an MP charger as well, because four hits on a single target 
Mm, probably not the greatest, but you know, it, you'd make do with what you can on that one. And because she is arts, this overcharge effect can also be pretty nice. If you're using her with Lady Avalon, just using the second skill means she gets 15%. And then if you charge it up where uh, Lady Avalon's skill is first and then you use her NP, that's an additional 20% arts. It's just nice. And then with Castoria, you would put that on top and then you get over to here. It's just very nice in general to have. Um... But yeah, I think she just ends up looking like a pretty solid good unit. I don't really have much to say like, yo, this is bad. Like I said, for most times when it comes to summer units, a lot of the- And I also like that this like instant kill skill also has it so like if you're fighting specifically against a servant with a very high instant kill where you just won't be able to instant kill them, then it's alright because you'll be able to do more servant damage on top of it and then you'll also get crit damage and with Lady Avalon, there's actually a point to that now. <laughs> it's actually possible to get that kind of stuff. And then I also like that this evasion is two attacks over three turns, so it's possible for them to completely skip over her and then go for it. But obviously if you're using it with a taunt, then she'll absorb two hits and then on the third one, whatever. And then increase of 30% is pretty solid. Yeah, it just seems like a pretty solid unit. I don't know if you have a need for a single target Avenger, then she can do that for you if you don't already have one. I actually think I don't have one, so. I could probably make use of her when I go as I'm, because I'll assume I'm going to be getting a buttload of copies of her as I'm going for Summer Ibuki, because I'm going to, like I said at the beginning, I have 300 tickets ready for Summer Ibuki. So yeah, that's uh, that's Eric over here. Very good, very good unit. And feel free to tell me how to actually say her name, otherwise I will just continue calling her Eric. Anyway, Summer Ibuki time. Summer Ibuki is a berserker. She has, uh, she's a berserker, obviously. Uh, one quick, two arts, two buster. Three hits on quick, three hits on arts, two hit, uh, four hits on buster, and five hits on extra. First skill is the Midsummer Goddess B. Increases party's attack for three turns, increases party's quick damage for three turns, increases MP generation rate for some remote servants allies for three turns, which is basically anyone who has a summer swimsuit. 20% uh, to attack, 30% to crit damage, and 30% to the MP uh, generation rate on cooldown of 6. Her second skill is the Summer Cheerleader C. Increases one ally's uh, arts and bust performance for 3 turns, and then reduce their skill cooldown by 1. 30% and 30% for both of them on a cooldown of 6. Her third skill is the Beach Apocalypse A+. Charge own MP gauge, gain critical stars every turn for 3 turns, increase own critical star absorption for 3 turns, 50% of level 10, star regen is 10, the absorption is 500%, 5000%, on a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Madness Enhancement E, Dragonkind EX, and Snake Goddess A. Her third append skill is the Anti-Alter Ego Critical Attack Chance Resistance. And her Noble Phantasm is the Rank B+, Ibuki no Mitami, Hachimiyaku Doto, Honorable Spirit of Ibuki, 8 channels, Surging Waves, Rank B+, Anti-Army, Arts, Hits 5 times, Removes all enemy defensive buffs, the defensive buffs include any of the following that you can see here, anything that would increase their defense, increase their resistance to uh, quick arts buster, all damage, MP damage resistance up, evade, Chance to evade, invincibility, uh, anti-purge defense, the ignore defensive class disadvantage, and instant kill resistance. Then deals damage to them and then also reduces their critical attack chance by 20% for 3 turns. At MP level 1 it's 450% and if you get her all the way to MP level 5 it's 750%. Um, every overcharge effect is deal extra damage against earth attributes and then the, at charge level 1 it's 150% and if you get her all the way to the final charge level it's 200% and then she also has an additional costume with the malevolent midsummer goddess if you just want her to be a little bit more 80s in her summer look and that is summer ibuki <sighs> yeah like i said at the beginning of the video this unit is really 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 fucking good um on na currently uh, likely the best the best unit you can use for art that is arts and berserker and is aoe um, obviously eventually we will get to the point where some of them will be able to out damage her, but only under very specific scenarios, and obviously MP levels and all that other stuff. Now, what I mean by that is when, uh, Summer Musashi eventually gets to the point where she'll be able to do 200% to Saber enemies, obviously if you're gonna be fighting a bunch load of Saber enemies, she's gonna be doing more damage to her, <laughs> but on the average, Summer Ibuki will usually out damage her. She is... 
an insane unit, absolutely crazy, super crazy good, still used on JP, still good here, don't really see a replacement woman for her, but at the same time, summer is coming up <laughs> on JP, so I don't know the longitude of that, what I do know is for the now and for two years at least, she is going to be uh, the go-to arts um, berserker for sure, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's about it. I can't, and let me see, let me try and do my best to try and say like how good she is in so many ways. If you just don't know, I like this ability. Obviously it's just a party attack increase, the crit damage increase, and then also it has an additional to increase MP generation rate when a lot of the times Berserker MP generation rate can be pretty bad. This would be all good if it all went to her, but every single one of these also goes to the allies. And if for whatever reason you're also in a summer mode servant, which funny enough, Lady Avalon I believe counts as one because her second outfit is a, um, is one of them so yes she'll be included in one of those so she'll be able to get mp generation up assuming you attack with them or anything like that i like this second skill summer cheerleader because this can actually funny enough be used with uh arc the reason is is that arc has an amazing uh where is she under has an amazing skill that gives her back 100 percent np the problem is this is on a cooldown of seven so with double coin and skaya that would still mean that you're one turn away from actually being able to use it again. That's where you would bring in Summer Ibuki, give her 30% of Buster damage on top, and then also give her a reduced skilled cooldown and be able to let her immediately let it rip with her NP. Obviously, it's not as damage inducing as using probably double Oberon and some other things, but it is very funny that you can do it. <laughs> Sometimes it's good enough to be like, oh yeah, I can just get this back with Double Coin Skya, and then she should, if you, her MP levels are high enough, be able to take out whatever. Um, very funny that you can use that if you're in a challenge quest type scenario. The ability to reduce a skill cooldown on something that is a cooldown of 6 is really good. Uh, you can use this either offensively to increase your attack, or you can use it even in a defensive way to make it so that one of your servants who... Like, for example, Lady Avalon, she'd be able to get her invincibility back just slightly faster, though. For the most part, I would say you probably want to use this as an attack focus, but it is nice to have the option to do that. More options in battle is always good. And her third skill, the Charge on MP Gauge, you very rarely ever need 50% on an Arts, but it does mean that it gives you a little bit more leeway when you're in weird team comps. What do I mean by that? Let's say you're in a scenario where, obviously, if it's 3-3-3, three, 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 she doesn't need the 50%. She's going to easily loop and then boom... No problems, but what if you're in a situation where it's 3, 2, 1? Well, thankfully, you'll be able to do the, the hit normally on turn 1. Turn 2, you hit them. Maybe you get to maybe close to 50%. It's okay then, because then you can use Beach Apocalypse, get that 50, and be able to hit the last dude. And you're going to be doing enough damage um, to take out that solo one <laughs> yourself because she does enough damage that you should be able to kill him out pretty easily. And for whatever reason, you're not able to kill him out pretty easily. You're in a weird situation. But anyway, um, let's say it's another challenge quest type scenario. You will be able to get star regen and she also has the absorption, which is very nice because a lot of berserkers are very bad when it comes to crit star absorption. Naturally, I want to say they have like the lowest and then Ryder is the highest. You can feel free to correct me on that one, but I'm almost positive that's the way it usually is. But also sometimes it feels like that's not true because I feel like casters are supposed to be also really low and then every single time I ever used Waver back in the day, it like instantly went to him. But either way, luck is luck. Um, it's a really good skill. Um, her Noble Phantasm absolutely amazing to remove defensive buffs you could just literally say i don't care that's very nice of you to put up your defense but it, it doesn't really matter if you're fighting against any one of the earth attribute you're gonna be dealing 150 percent but then as i mentioned beforehand with eric this is on overcharge so if you actually use it with Lady avalon's second skill that's 162.5 percent to um to allies, and then if you use her with Lady Avalon first, and then hers, it's 175%, and then if you use uh, Lady Avalon, Castoria, and then her, that's 187, and that's all just from MP1, and that's something that's a benefit for a uh, Buster-type team setup. Um, and if you're fighting anything that's Earth, then they are just fucking dying instantly to you. It is crazy. She's extremely good. I could go on, but I think you guys get the basic gist of it. Um, and then also crit 
chance reduction is nice. She doesn't really have Guts, which is, I think, the one kind of negative you can have for a Berserker, because the problem with a lot of Berserkers is that they get one crit and then they instantly die, so they kind of need the ability to survive that. Um, but crit chance resistance will help with that a little bit. And plus, she is on a more defensive focus team, especially if you're using at Lady Avalon. If you're, let's say, you're going into a challenge quest, because there's plenty of Earth-related uh, dudes, Lady Avalon has your back as far as invincibility for a turn. And then Castoria has anti-purge defense, so that when they do eventually attack her, then she'll be the de de defended and it'll be pretty, pretty nice. So there's ways around it, at least. And the other thing that I would say was probably a slight negative is... <coughs> If you're not using full supports, you can see here that it can your damage can be a little bit... Mm, no, I don't want to say on the weak side, but I'll say that specifically giving to herself, she gives herself 20% attack, and then 30% from for Arts and Buster, and that's basically it. Um, so you have to probably think about that if you're um, trying to build a team that is using, like, I guess not a lot of supports. It's something to keep in mind for the most part, but, you know, it'll come up... Very rarely, I would assume. <laughs> Unless you're just making the world's wor weirdest, jankiest team. And that's Summer Ibuki. I can't wait for her. I love everything about Summer Ibuki. I think I, I didn't mention it because I don't see it as a negative. I see it as a skill issue. There are some people who don't like Raida's art style, especially if you've been paying attention, I guess, to the Hoyoverse stuff. Um... Because they announced that they were doing a, co a collab and then immediately people went like, Oh, Raiko ugly. And then all those people, of course, have terrible taste. Because Raida is a fantastic artist who makes <laughs> fantastic art. Absolutely amazing. And, it's, and I stand by that. He can probably, he really enjoys his fetishes when it comes to female characters. But his men, for example, are also fantastically built. And I love the colors he uses. I love the design. I love how unabashed he is about how, and also how much of a go is just like, hey, go for it. Um, and he really did go for it. She has three different, she has this one, she has this one, <laughs> she has this one, and then like I said, the 80s style, oh yeah, and then there's th this one as well. That's final art though. That's, that's not an outfit, that's just a state of being. And then she also has this outfit as well. And obviously because of such a bold art style, it's gonna put off a lot of people. But again, I don't really consider that a negative because I love Ibuki and I love everything about her and I love all these sprites and I love all this art and I think it's all great and it's all fantastic and you're never going to hear me say otherwise so yeah I think probably the, the but if you're someone who probably doesn't dig this art style then I think you should probably best save yourself for actual units you care about I think that's for the best some, some people would probably disagree with me and say like hey man whatever put up with the unit that you don't like and use them and I'm just going to say nah I don't think you understand how most people work, where if they get a unit that they don't like, even if it's strong, like for example, if I got Doman, even though he is insanely strong, and he is like one of the best uh, AoE quick units and quick units in general, would I actually use him if I was able to get him? And I think the answer is no. Like even if he's strong, I don't care for the character, I don't like him, I'm not going to use him. It's that simple. Um... Unless you are specifically built and you don't care about any of these characters and you're just like, I actually just care about all the stats in the game. I don't think there's anyone like that that exists in this game, but there has to at least be like 1% out there. For those, then yeah, that matters less. But for the people who do care about that stuff, I do think that it's probably best for you to move on from Ibuki and maybe start looking for others. <laughs> Though it is going to be a bummer that she is a... Uh, this strong she's strong enough that you can't ignore her <laughs> similar to how like buster when you have arjuna altar and you have him and you just go yeah uh, i can see why he's one of the best same thing goes for milusane when you have milusane uh the second i got milusane i was like man really hard to, to justify using any other buster lancer but milusane once you have her so something to kind of, that's probably the same level of abuki um but anyway i, I rattled on long enough Feel free to tell me how uh, you're going along. I assume for the most part, again, and the other thing to kind of keep in mind before I forget, I'm all over the place, is that there are other summon banners this year. There's Lady Avalon, and then there is Scotty. <clears throat> some people obviously failed to get Scotty, and they're probably going to be looking to do some more summons, so they're not even looking to Ibuki right now. I will say, if you're a new player, having Lady Avalon and then having the Ibuki and then having a friend Castoria would be pretty easy to carry you through a lot of stuff, uh, especially early on, and especially if you're also able to get Eric over here. Um, both of them would be able to fulfill a niche, which is like you have a single target, um, 
arts unit that can be used kind of easily between units because not a lot of um, negatives to them. That's, negatives not the right word. For example, if you have a really strong saber single target, you would never be able to use them against um, archer. But with uh, Eric over here, you'd be able to kind of just generically use them until you're better built on other team aspects and stuff like that. Um, and with Wibuki, it, it would be pretty... Um, it, it'd make things a lot easier. The reason is is that she's able to like loop with not a lot. Like Zongfu, uh, Lady Avalon, and then a friend Castoria, and an Ibuki, and you'd probably be set up pretty easily, even with not a lot of skill, um, not a lot of investment in skill stuff, because it's just that kind of easy with uh, arts. Because <laughs> all you need, really need is a friend Castoria, and I've been kind of using this summer to do the same. Um... And yeah, the other one is Scotty as well, which I'm also planning to do, but I have other things to plan for. But for the people who haven't been planning ahead over two years, you need to pick your battles much better and much easier, so... Understandable. Anyway, I think I've rattled on long enough. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you guys the best of luck. I'll see you guys Sunday when I do the full 300 tickets. I think I've decided I'm just gonna go full send all 300 to Summer Ibuki and we'll see where it goes. <laughs> Hopefully, I do. it doesn't take exactly 300 to get one Summer Ibuki, but we'll see. I will see you guys in the next episode. Not the next episode. I'm ending this like it's shown in archive. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, and good luck.